Greetings, Pastor Eric again from Zion Lutheran Church in beautiful Redmond. We're on day 12, and we're on Luke 12, and there's two do not fears really close together, so we're going to take both of them today, and it's Luke 4, verses 4 through 7. Let me read those for you. I tell you, my friends, do not fear those who can kill the body, and after that can do nothing more. But I will warn you whom to fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten in God's sight, but even the hairs of your head are numbered. Do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Now, there's some stuff in there about the devil and killing the body, that kind of stuff that we're not going to look at, but do not fear those who can kill the body and do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. You know, one of the things that, that this chapter really puts in perspective is how we often overvalue and overrate ourselves and sometimes underrate God. Think about that a little bit. We overrate, we overvalue ourselves, our thoughts, and we underrate, undervalue God. Um, <clears throat> think of that with the whole wave of this virus that continues to affect everything from the economy to people's health, disrupting people's lives, causing shortage of different kinds of food, impacting businesses and jobs, causing all kinds of mental health issues. I don't think we've even begun to see all of the mental health issues, the depression, the anger, the um, drinking and drug abuse, all that kind of stuff that has come from this virus, the grief that this virus has brought to so many families, we need a perspective, a fresh perspective on God for a breakthrough because we often overrate ourselves and we underrate God. Listen to a little bit of how different verses in the Bible value God. For instance, Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 to 31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He's not going to grow tired or weary. His understanding is something that no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even young grow tired and weary. The young men stumble and fall. But those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar with wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faith faint. We really need a fresh perspective on the whole power and presence and majesty of God in the midst of this pandemic because this whole virus, this whole isolation, um, this whole sweatpant time, People are growing weary, they're growing anxious, they're stumbling and fainting, under not fainting, but falling under the pressure of this prolonged stress. But with a different kind of perspective on how great God is, we can gain strength and power and encouragement and, and really peace, peace of heart, peace of mind to make it through this time. Think of Psalm 19 verses 1 through 6. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens, he has pitched a tent for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming forth from his pavilion, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is hidden from its heat. So what does that tell you about God in the Psalms and Isaiah? What does that tell you about God? This incredibly powerful, creating, caring God 
Um, we know that just by looking at the stars and the moon at night in central Oregon, um, to think that God made the sun and the moon and the stars and all that there is in this beautiful world that God has given us, all you have to do is look up and around to see the glory and the power of God. You know, you can see so far at night. You can see on a dark, dark night in central Oregon. You can see the Milky Way galaxy. You can see with the, with the unaided eye a galaxy of Deneb, which is apparently nine quad million uh, light years away. That's nine followed by 15, 15 zeros, quad million. That's a lot of zeros. God made your eyes amazingly powerful so that you can see at night just a glimpse of the magnificence of the creation of God. But even as powerful as our eyes are, God's eyes are even more powerful. God sees the distant galaxies in the universe, but the cool thing is that God can also see the shortest hair on the left leg of the tiniest bug. God can count every hair on your head, every single one of them. Now, that's not too hard for me, but it might be for you. We believe, we worship a God who knows and sees absolutely everything. And God sees us. God sees us perfectly and completely. And when God looks at you, God doesn't just look at the outside, your clothes, your hair, your nose. God looks deep into your heart. God sees who you are. God sees all of those fears, anxieties, those joys, those sorrows, those celebratory things. God sees into your heart and mind and sees all of those things. So when we talk to God in prayer, we can bring the concerns of our heart to God, whether we're feeling um, uh, anxiety or anger about the violence in Minneapolis against George Floyd, whatever it is, whatever we're feeling, the joy of a beautiful day like today, all of the different realms at the end of the spectrum of the continuum of life in which we find ourselves, we can go to God and talk to God and unload our hearts and minds to God. There's something just amazing about that. So we shouldn't overrate ourselves and underrate God. Instead, we should go to God with a sense of awe at God's majesty. Job was frustrated. Remember Job in the Old Testament? He was frustrated with God in a time when he didn't think God was around very much. And God says to Job in Job 8.31, Can you bind up the chains of the cluster of stars? Can you loose the cords of the constellation Orion? Can you lead forth the signs of the zodiac in their season? Can you guide the star of the bear with her young? God says, look at who I am. And even though I am so great, I still care for you, Job. I still care for each and every one of you. The hairs on your head are numbered. God, who created this whole beautiful world in which we live, still cares about every detail of our lives. So that's why I think we need a fresh perspective on the greatness of God that puts all of the little things in life that we're going through that seem so big, that puts them really into perspective. We need prayer to cry out to God to heal our land, not only from the virus of racism and hatred, but from the virus, the coronavirus that is infecting and killing thousands and thousands of people around the world. We need to remember the greatness of God, have respect for God's greatness and goodness, because even in that greatness and goodness, God still counts the hairs on our heads. Fear not. You are worth so much more than a little sparrow. You are my child, God wants to say. You are my child. Do not fear. I've got this, God says and continues to say. God values who we are more than anything else in all of creation. Just think of that.
today. Let's close in prayer. O oh God of majesty and power, God who spoke and the world was, God who breathed and this world lived, God who counts the hairs on our head, who sees our thoughts and reads our minds, who loves us more than we deserve, we bring to you our sacrifice of praise. We bring our lives, troubled or broken or at ease. We bring our selfishness to you and ask that you teach us how to love as you loved. We pray that you would take away our sense of pride and show us the meaning of humility and love and respect. For your promises for which we hold tight, we give you thanks. For intimacy with you, we give thanks. We thank you for your majesty over all of your creation and your care, your deep care for each and every one of us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay then, enjoy your day. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.